titles, but um, that that phrase I know just appears um, twice in our um, in our panel today, in, in two of the two of the three titles. Um, so we're going to change order slightly because uh, Judith doesn't have a PowerPoint and neither does um, Carolina and and Florence. So uh, we'll let uh, Mitra go first, uh, so that you know um, everybody up there can see the PowerPoint, and then all the speakers will be up here uh, and we'll uh, have um, uh, Florence and um, Carolina. Uh, go second and then do that for us, okay? All right, so um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Shamanitra, uh, your, your, your PowerPoint. Oh, okay. yeah, she was oh, okay. her PowerPoint. So Dr. Shamanitra Dalan is a senior lecturer at the College of Creative Arts, University uh, technology, Mara, in Malaysia. Um, she uh, completed her uh, PhD in postcolonial diaspora and literature at Monash University um, in Australia and has uh, taught at uh, Goethe University in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, and uh, several other institutions in India. Uh, she uh, publishes her research um, and her interests include uh, postcolonial migration and diasporic literatures, transnational and um, transcultural literatures and cultures, life writing and food writing, uh, quite a wide range of, uh, of research interests. Uh, so, welcome, Jim. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah. The short person. Yeah, uh, I would like to thank everyone for welcoming me to Hong Kong here. This is my first time here and uh, it's wonderful. So thank you very much and also providing me with the platform of this uh, Thanatic Ethics Conference. Okay. So as you can see, uh, is it okay? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the title of my today's paper is Requiem for Reclamation, Storing Otherwise in Cecil Payne's Wandering Soul. So I will start my presentation today with some quotes. So Jaina Bragger, in her essay, Bodies of Water, published in the New Enquiry in 2015, observes, the oceans are full of bodies. This is nothing new. The currents are imbricated with centuries old ghosts of the transatlantic slave trade, the genocide of millions of Africans, the acceptable loss in the conversion of people into commodities. At Cape Horn, the particles of African ghosts mingle with the fragments of Chilean and Argentinian disappeared and whispered together of endemic violence. They are joined by the bodies of refugees turned away from the shore, taken by the sea at the behest of state policy. The wind and the waves are always already full of ghosts, the particles of all the bodies rolling together with marine debris. The novel written by Cecil Peen that I have selected today to focus on commences with the quotation, there are goodbyes and then the fishing out of the bodies. Everything in between is speculation. As we know, like yesterday, they were talking about like the International Organization of Migrations, Missing Migrant Projects has recorded 54,000 deaths and disappearance. So we all know about that. So I am now quoting a little bit different from Donna Haraway's uh, on receiving her Pilgrim Award uh, on, in 2011, conferred by the Science Fiction Research Association Honoring a lifetime contribution to science fiction and fantasy scholarship, Donna Haraway comments in her acceptance speech, it matters what matters with use to think other matters with. It matters what stories we tell to tell other stories with. It matters what knots, not knots, what thoughts think thoughts, what ties, tie ties. It matters what stories make words, what worlds make stories. The following disinformation and observations, today I will attempt 
to locate an intergenerational terceto, a combination of three voices, which has been shaped by Cecil Pin in her novel, articulating the exigencies of the predicament of migration, deaths and disappearances to highlight the necessity of reclaiming stories we don't own. So Cecil Pin's debut novel, Wandering Souls, which was published last year in March, 2023, it was longlisted for Women's Prize for Fiction, the Pre-Femina Etrosia, and shortlisted for the Waterstones Debut Fiction Prize. A French Vietnamese and a London Writers Award 2021 winner, Pin grew up in Paris and New York before moving to London to study philosophy. Now, Wandering Souls is primarily prompted and haunted by the suppressed and silenced voice of Cecil Pin's mother, who had to flee her village in Southeast Vietnam after the war, first to a camp in Thailand, and then settling in France, where she met Pin's father, losing her parents and half of her siblings on the way to the sea. Pin's novel similarly unfolds the story of three siblings who lose their parents and four other younger siblings in the sea on their way from a war-torn Vietnam to Kai Tak refugee camp in Hong Kong in search of the promised land. The novel charts the travels of the surviving 15-year-old Ang and her two brothers, Ming and Tang, as it carefully weaves the story of this orphaned child refugee's odyssey from a cozy family home in Vung Tham in South Vietnam, with its lingering smell of caramelized braised pork and eggs, to the harsh Kai Tak refugee detention center in Hong Kong, and then to the Royal Air Force Sople refugee camp in Hampshire, and finally uh, to a council flat at Catford in South London. The second voice interlacing the novel is the phantom voice of Dao, Ang's seven-year-old brother who perished at sea and is scarce to wander like ghost on earth, and whose palpable voice throughout the narrative acts as a pensive observer interweaving the world of the living and the world of the dead. However, this polyvocal novel chronicles events from 1978 to 2022, is also framed by an omniscient narrator and researcher who continues to fuse factual details with the fictional narrative, often logging the inner voice of her introspective self referring not only to the historical intricacies of the Vietnam War and its aftermath, but also provides the relevant contextual specificities, including the horrific 1979 Kokra tragedy, in which Thai fishermen intercepted a Vietnamese refugee boat and raped and killed its cargo, through the Thatcherite anti-immigration policies, which initially proposed to forcefully repatriate 40,000 Vietnamese boat people arriving from different refugee camps in Hong Kong, to the American military tactics in the name of Operation Wandering Souls, which was an act of psychological warfare used against the Viet Cong, the communist-led army and the guerrilla force, taking advantage of the local beliefs that the dead, not given a proper burial, are forced to wander the earth as ghosts. The narrator researcher also recounts the contemporary issues, including the 2019 Essex lorry death incident, where 39 Vietnamese asylum seekers were suffocated to death in an airtight container sealed in pitch darkness for more than 12 hours as they were transported across the channel following their payment of upwards like 20,000 pounds per person. Uh, the author also referred to the recent COVID and the anti-Asian protest as well. So I'm not going into it because you can all, you know what's going, what went on. Now, the identity of the narrator researcher is revealed at the end of the novel as Jane Wai Van Loon, who is the uh, who is the daughter of the eldest surviving sibling Ang and the granddaughter of Ang's parents who perished at sea on their way from Vung Tham in South Vietnam to Kai Tak refugee camp. Jane's final journal entry in the novel, dated March 2023, ends the novel with this final couplet.
So this is the couplet that the novel finishes with. We tell ourselves stories in order to live. We tell ourselves stories in order to heal. In Fabrizio Terranova's documentary, Donna Haraway, Storytelling for Aki Survival in 2016, uh, Haraway claims that when the worldly stories of the earth are at stake, we need other kind of stories. Haraway's formulation of storing otherwise is conceptualized through a symbolic vision of string figures where entangled thoughts and ideas and interrelated perspectives generate a vital sense of responsibility. Therefore, as Cecil Pin in her novel interweaves her Vietnamese mother's silent presence, Tao's phantom voice, and Jane's research, culminating in inscribing an introspective biographical fictional narrative, the shifting and fluid spaces of the dead and the living merge together and unwittingly transformed into unwittingly transformed itself into a fused and intergenerational voice for reclamation where the stories heard and the stories told shapes a novel configuration of an affirmative ethics of interconnectedness. The Jane's research in the novel through histories and testimonies of the Vietnamese boat people, which is simultaneously prompted by her mother, Ang's deliberate separation of her past and constant hauntings of the snatches of stories that she heard from her, of her grandparents and the four baby siblings fished out of the sea, unveils indescribable pain and trauma, but it also drives her to ponder. And, he, and she writes, as my knowledge and understanding grows, I feel a responsibility to pass it on, as if I had inherited these stories, as if it is now my burden and my care. I cannot let it fade away. I cannot let it die. Knowledge allows remembering, and remembering is honoring. I want all the date to be revered. I want monuments and statues and poems in their honor. I want podcasts and tempered docuseries. I want our own apocalypse now. However, Haraway in her essay, Situated Knowledge, claims that knowledge is influenced by power and politics. And there is no such thing as objective or true knowledge, as every knowledge is always made and is produced by both researchers and an active subject of research. Hence, she emphasizes a process of positioning that privileges contestation, deconstruction, passionate construction, webbed connections, and hope for transformation of systems of knowledge and ways of seeing it. So stories need to be told through varied perspectives, establishing interconnections and interdependence, which is not restricted within time and space or within blood and spaces or even within nationality or ethnicity, but stories which generate manifold ways of cultivating responsibility. Haraway perceives responsibility is in the, in the following way, that responsibility is both absence and presence, killing and nurturing, living and dying. Therefore, in spite of her bearing intense bouts of anger and hatred, Jane ultimately realizes, I could point fingers. I could blame politics. I could blame war and poverty and pirates and the sea and the storm. But the more I go on, the more I realize that nothing is to blame and everything is to blame, intertwined in a medley of cause and effect, history and nature. I'm trying to carve out a story between the macabre and the fairy tale so that a glimmer of truth can appear. It is to, through this shadowy interstices of histories and stories, Tao's voice emerges from under the sea. Now, as Tao's voice in the story weaves his own version of the story following his death, along with his parents and four younger siblings at sea, Parallelly, it runs parallelly with the stories of his surviving siblings traveling through the refugee camps to the council flat in the United Kingdom. So Dao's alternate voice provides a perspective otherwise. Dao is a seven year old boy who died and he did not remember or understand even much about death. He can only describe 
his feelings and he said, there was weightlessness. As I left my body and gravity left me, I drifted on an ocean of white that was surrounding me until I was joined by my little brother and father and my sisters and mother. When the whiteness dissolved like fog when it sees the daylight approaching and I could see the boat from above, except now it has sunk beneath the waves and bodies were floating all around it. Thou has never heard of United Kingdom before, but when she, when he came to know that his surviving siblings are going over there, he started to ponder. I wonder if it helps knights and princes of empires and palaces and castles, if it held paddy fields too, like the ones on the hills near Wuntam, on which the sun rises every morning. I wondered what united the kingdom, if it were held together by a rope or a chain, or if it was a kingdom in which the people were united that had not known the division of war. When he gets bored with his existence only as a phantom leaf, phantom lean, sorry, uh, of what our families could have been, he went swimming in the deepest corner of the coral sea with the whales and jellyfish, starfish and dolphins, wandering in team with Jenna Braga's observation at the beginning of my presentation, as I say, and thou said, how I thought how it was the same water that had held me and my family in our dying breaths. His constant rest restlessness that I cannot stay still and I cannot rest, I cannot sit or lie down. I am awake and aware, always on the move, drifting and roaming with no end in sight, highlights the necessity of a proper burial of the remains of their bodies. And so, after long 40 years, when their caskets were carried to Saigon, which has come to know as Ho, Ho Chi Minh City later for a proper burial, Dao restfully regards, I did not need to wander anymore or to play games. It was a time to rest. I am no longer a phantom being. I am the beloved brother Dao gone too soon. I'm a real ancestor. So Cecil Pin thus in his, her wandering souls weaves an intergenerational string figure of storing otherwise, where everyone, irrespective of the dead and the living, the earlier or the later generation, strives to fill in the gaps, to find stories in every little insignificant moment, to embody the unknown and to make sense of the senselessness. As Jane highlights towards the end of the novel, how stories have held her and her mum and all those who has perished together, she reflects. We look for the silver linings and the whys and what ifs and what should have been. We try to solve the puzzle, pieces scattered through time and space and the deepest corner of our memories. And what better way is there of doing that? What better way is there of processing our past than by rewriting it? I contend that such symbolic reincarnations of the lost and the dead through storing otherwise transmute death into porous borders, uh, which quietly precipitate the understanding of how everyone and everything in our planet are connected to each other. Thank you.